Welcome to another Hockey from Home presented by Nationwide. I'm Bob McElligot, and I'm joined today by Blue Jackets defenseman Seth Jones. And this is really not Hockey from Home. Well, it is for me, but for Seth, he's <laughs> inside the bubble. Uh, is there anything that could be further from home than being inside the bubble? What's it like there? Um, yeah, definitely not Hockey from Home for me. Um, this is, I guess, I mean, technically it's my new home for the next, hopefully the next eight weeks. Um, but it's, it's interesting, you know, our first couple of days we definitely – uh, try to get acclimated. You know, we're just walking around, seeing where everything's at, where our team room's at, um, our lounge and um, things like that. Uh, NHL did a great job of putting it together for us, you know, golf simulators, um, some, you know, activities we can do around the hotel. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. We've had a couple of practices in so far. So um, we're spending a lot of time with each other. I'm sure we're going to get sick of each other soon, but uh, for right, right now it's fun. All right. So at this moment, only a couple of days into it, is it kind of like, any other long road trip? I know how much you guys look forward to going on long road trips. I look forward to going mm-hmm. on long road trips because you get a chance to get away. Uh, you get to be with everybody every day, hang out with your buddies and your friends. And, yeah, you got to work and play hockey, mm-hmm. of course. But it's just a, it's a different feel. Is that how it is right now in these first couple of days? Uh, does it just feel like a road trip? For sure it does. Um, you know, the only thing that's different, you know, we have the, the big bags everyone brought. Everyone brought more than probably what they need. Um, but yeah, it feels like we're on a road trip right now. Uh, we're staying a couple of days in Toronto before we play them or whatever the case is. Uh, but I'm sure it'll really start kicking in, you know, as we go along here, uh, how long we could really be on this road trip. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, uh, it, it's kind of semi isolation, but yet everybody's rooting to be in it for two months, right? Sorry, Bob, you're, you're kind of breaking. Oh, up. Okay. I didn't hear that. No, that's all right. I said, it's kind of like you're in semi isolation, but everybody's rooting to be there for two months. Exactly. Exactly. It wouldn't be a bad thing. You know, everyone's, everyone says it's going to be uh, tough to be here in a hotel room that long, but uh, I think every guy would choose to stay here, you know, as long as possible. It's like you said, and be to those last rounds uh, in this hotel in this situation. All right. Well, uh, the purpose behind this, Seth, is for the fans to be able to ask you questions and have you answer them. I ask you 10 million questions over the course of a year. So let's let them do some of that. We're going to start with uh, John Lyons today. And John simply wants to know, how does it feel to be back playing hockey after almost five months for both the team and for you? And he's got a little shout out uh, from his girlfriend, Haywine Kim, because they love you guys. So I wanted to let you know that. But what does it feel like being off for five months? Uh, it was interesting. It was very interesting. Um, it almost like, you know, well, I got hurt, you know, a month before the season ended. And um, so, I, you know, I've been off for, you know, longer than everyone else, but it, it was just weird. Um, it was, you know, for me, it was a little bit more normal than the other guys because they they went home. They couldn't even go to the rink. They couldn't work out at the rink. Um, they couldn't, even in their hometowns, rinks were shut down because of COVID, um, because of the pandemic. And so, uh, for me, with my ankle uh, being injured, I was able to go to the rink every day. I was able to uh, rehab with our trainers, uh, people I'm comfortable with, and um, end up, you know, skated really from week eight for my injury all the way through. So I almost, you know, uh, a little bit of a blessing in disguise that my ankle did get hurt because I've been skating, you know, that much longer than everyone else um, during this whole, whole uh, off break. Alex Collins wants to know, how does it feel starting up the postseason – so close to what is normally the beginning of the preseason. I mean, heck, right now you guys yeah. would be – you'd just be thinking about uh, your last couple of weeks of freedom before you have to come to camp. Exactly. Uh, it is strange. It's the mentality you have to really um, – and we've kind of tried to, uh, to implement this through the entire camp. that We don't have, you know, six preseason games. We don't have 10, 20 games um, to get ready for the playoffs. It's going to be – you know, we have one exhibition game. It's going to be, um, you know – the, co- the compete level has to be at the highest level right from the drop of uh, the fucking game one. So a little bit of a change up, um, but I think we'll be ready for it. I want to mix in uh, this question from Grace, who's only 10 years old, who wants to know, how does it feel to be a professional hockey player? What are the best and the worst parts? And that's an interesting question to me because wow. I-, I think anybody that doesn't do what you do thinks that everything is grand, but there probably are some parts <laughs> that uh, – they're just like any other job. So what's the best and worst, Seth? Um, best part would just be the friendships that they create. And, uh, you know, uh, um, over the years, you know, this is my fifth, almost my fifth year with Columbus. And so the friendships I've created here are lifelong friendships. They're around these guys all the time. Uh, you get to know each other very well. And 
um, you know, we get to do what we love to do. You know, that's the best part about my job. I, um, there are, well, I'll talk about uh, some of the bad things in a sec, but you know, uh, I do what I love to do every day and I love to compete. I love to play hockey. Uh, and that's the most important thing for me. I'm happy doing it. And the worst part, you know, I don't have, you know, family and kids, but I can only imagine if you're on a long road trip or, um, you know, you're feeling sad because you're away from your kids, away from your family. You know, we travel a lot. And, um, you know, sometimes we're gone for 15, two weeks, you know, on some of the long Western Canada trips, things like that. And, um, you know, living in a hotel life for that long could get old. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, you'll, I'll take that for, um, for, you know, to play hockey, what I love to do. All right. Here's a question from Amanda Blakely, who wants to know, do you feel that playing without the fans actually physically present will affect the team's morale? It should be, it should be very interesting. I think, um, I know the NHL did, a, uh, uh, I've seen pictures of the arena and how they've kind of tried to block certain areas. So it doesn't just look at empty seats around. Um, and curtain off and rope off some things. So um, it should be weird. I, I, I know they're trying to do some crowd noise, trying to implement something like that in a way if there's a goal scored or a big hit or something like that, just so you can try to create momentum um, through a little bit of noise. Uh, but it's going to be strange. You're going to hear a lot of sounds that you probably wouldn't hear uh, in a game. And uh, it's just going to be you and the other team, and, that, and that's it. Have you watched any sports um... – you know, like I know baseball has started now. There's no crowd there. They have the simulated crowd noise. Have you watched any other sports where they're pumping that in? Have you seen what it's like as a viewer? Uh, I've watched a little bit of basketball, um, some of those exhibition games. I think their season starts Thursday. Um, but, you know, I think they have the video fans uh, around the outside. Um, but like I said, you just – obviously you're not going to get that momentum from the crowd, you know. If you have a, uh, when we play in, you know, nationwide, someone scores a big goal or a big hit or we have a great shift in their zone for a minute, minute and a half. You know, the fans that love it, everyone's on their feet, everyone's cheering. Um, so you're going to have to create your own energy. Um, and that's going to be a real change for, I think, a lot of people. All right. Well, you mentioned basketball, so that leads us perfectly into this next question. Andrew Smith would like to know, he says, I know your dad's a former NBA player and current coach. Do you watch much NBA? And if so, who's your favorite team? I do watch a lot of NBA. Um, I watch uh, – there's a lot of national TV games that I can watch throughout the weeks and on and off nights and things like that. Um, wow, my favorite team. Well, my dad coached the Pacers, so you got to <laughs> – If you I, went I somewhere else, that. I was going to be exactly, shocked. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, no, I love LeBron. Uh, uh, I like, you know, the rivalry that they've created. You know, Giannis is obviously a great player. Um, I like watching – some of those big games on national TV. Yeah, I, I love watching basketball on TV just as much as I love watching a hockey game on TV, uh, which is crazy because I never played organized basketball at all, but it's been a part of my life since, you know, I was born. Is it kind of a um, an escape for you in some ways? I mean, you're inundated with hockey all the time, and, I, and it's mm -hmm. great to watch, but sometimes you feel like I just got to watch something else, and basketball gives you that chance? Exactly, exactly. I, I, you know, I'm around and doing hockey so much every day of my life that sometimes the last thing I want to do is go home and turn on a hockey game uh, to teams that, you know, I'm not playing against. So um, basketball is definitely a way to, to get away, a way to get away from hockey um, to watch that. And I enjoy it. And, you know, I can sit there, I can watch a whole basketball game from first quarter to fourth quarter and sit on my couch and I'll love it. Um, so that's definitely a hobby of mine. Can you break it down? Um, I can break down plays, you know, back screens, <laughs> screen, things like that. Like I know what they're running. Um, but I've never played organized basketball, so some things maybe may go over in my head. Oh, I need to do a high school basketball game and have you as a color analyst. That would be so <laughs> yeah. fun. I know, I know. That would be hilarious. You could, you I, could carry school, me. High school would probably be about the most I could do because I'd be too, <laughs> too slow for anything else. All right, let's see. Uh, what's next here? Patrick wants to know, how are the accommodations and the food inside of the bubble so far? Is the NHL providing any extracurricular activities to keep busy during the downtime? You mentioned the golf simulator. Uh, what yeah. other things have you found, or have you had a chance to explore it all yet? Um, we, you know, they have everything kind of roped off. So around our hotel, there's, um, you know, big gates. Um, but if you want to go walk to a couple of restaurants, there's alleyways. You have to go underneath under the arena to get there. No one else, obviously, no public outsiders can, can take the routes we take. Um, yeah, I guess it's uh, golf simulators. We have a room with ping pong table and video games. 
Uh, a lot of guys love playing cards. Um, so there, there are things that, to keep your time busy. I know a lot of guys on our team brought Xboxes and they brought their little monitors, you know, their little 20 inch monitors to play Xbox in the room. Um, so guys are finding their ways to stay busy. Um, but you know, when we can get out of the hotel and go to dinner, we will, um, and things like that. Yeah, that's what my son picked up from watching the video of you guys getting on the plane was all the guys that had their monitors with them. Yes, exactly, exactly. I actually brought mine. I was not a big gamer before quarantine. Like, I didn't even have, I didn't even have a, a console hooked up in my house. Like, my little brother plays a little bit, Caleb, uh, and I play with him sometimes in the summer, but not a lot. And since quarantine, I was so bored because everyone left, right? And I was in Columbus rehabbing my ankle. Now I just have an Xbox in my room right now. Like, <laughs> so that's pretty much all I do now. It's crazy. I didn't think I would turn into a gamer, but I did. Well, now you can have like four or five guys in your room. It'd be like exactly. um, it'd be like travel hockey, right? Back in the day. Exactly. Exactly. Bringing the Xbox on the road. Yeah. If you guys start playing knee hockey in the hallway past 10 o'clock, then it's oh, truly travel hockey. I think we'll be too tired for that once play starts. <laughs> um, <laughs> no one's going to want to waste that energy. <laughs> Again, you're making my job really easy because you mentioned your brother, Caleb. Uh, here's a question. Have you and your brother ever played on the same team? And if so, how did that go? No, we never have, actually. Um, uh, he's two and a half years younger than me, so we've never um, – that never the stars never aligned there. Um, but we were in the same organizations growing up, you know, first the Colorado organizations and then the Dallas organizations after. Uh, I played U.S. program, then he played U.S. program up in Michigan. I played Portland, then he played Portland. So we've kind of been along the same path a little bit um, of where we played and where we started. Uh, but he's just a little bit younger, so I was always the first to do things. And because of your injury, you talked about how that gave you an advantage getting back to play, but probably also took a little bit of family time, right? I mean, you couldn't for sure couldn't go with your mom and your brother. Uh, you had to stay yeah. in Columbus. I did. I went home uh, – May beginning of May for two weeks uh, and then I was right back here right back in Columbus so through that whole time I went home for two weeks um, and that was it everyone else is obviously home with their families or doing whatever they're doing uh, back in their home cities um, but you know I I, uh, I thought it was necessary you know it was necessary for me to get my ankle back to 100% um, because there was that small possibility you know back in uh, you know April and May no one knew we were playing but there was that small chance and so I if you know, we're here now, but if we did play, I wanted it to be ready to go. Lori wants to know, how is your mom handling not being in the bubbles? She jokes every day about her coming to the bubble, sneaking in the bubble. But uh, when I told her there was no fans uh, in the first few rounds, like, so I think it's the last two rounds, there's some family can come, uh, I'm hearing. Um, but I, when I said that uh, no fans are coming, she said she's going to put a wig on. Um, do all sorts of things to try to get in the ring to watch the game. So, so I wouldn't be surprised if she showed up here and I saw her walking down the street with a wig on. Let's put it that way. Could you imagine the international story it would be if your mother broke? Oh the my gosh! Oh, <laughs> she, if someone could do it, it'd be her. She, she'd and have she, the worker's outfit on. She would have everything on. She could do it, and she could talk herself out of the trouble too. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no right, question then. about that. Yeah. Uh, here's a question from Marty. Was your hotel floor customized with Blue Jackets decals like Toronto's is? Uh, no, it's not, actually. Uh, we didn't get the decals around the, around the floor. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? I thought there was supposed to be no home I, ice. I know, right? I know. It's, uh, it's a little bit of an advantage. You know, they're getting the decals <laughs> on the floor like it's their home rink or something, or home, home hotel. <laughs> Are you sure their moms didn't sneak in and put up those decals? I bet they did. I bet they did. <laughs> if my mom found out we didn't have them, she would be here in a heartbeat putting everything up. I'm sure all you the know, moms on the team would. Yeah, absolutely. No question. They'd have your name on the door, right? Your name exactly. and number on the door. We just I, don't know if, times. I, I don't know if guys want to reveal what, what rooms they're in, what rooms yeah. they're in but <laughs> especially to the moms. <laughs> well, yeah, that's yeah. that's a very, very good point. Uh, Anna, seven years old, wants to know if the guys are bored without as much to do. And uh, if so, what are you doing to pass the time? I, I know you've had a couple of practices. I don't know how much time you've had to kill so far, mm. but uh, what are you doing? Not a whole lot. Um, I mean, we're, we have each other to keep each other company. You know, that's really – but it is the first five days. So I think till the 31st uh, or the first, uh, we can't see other teams, can't hang out with other teams. So even if you have friends, you know, whoever's in our hotel, the Rangers or whoever it is, um, you can't even see them until the first. 
So we really just have each other. We're all on the same floor in the hotel. Uh, our team lounge is here. So we spend some time down there playing ping pong cards. Um, but for the most part, guys are just kind of hanging out um, and just uh, relaxing and kind of the calm before the storm right now, I guess. Yeah, that's, uh, that's well put right there. Hey, David has this question. As much as you like to cook, will it be strange not being able to do that while you're in the bubble? It is a little strange. I do like to cook. Um, you know, we, we have limited options right now on food. You know, breakfast in the hotel, uh, which is great, great setup. Um, but then, you know, like I said, the first, these first five, six days, we can only eat at certain restaurants because they're trying to keep teams away from each other. Uh, as much as possible but after these days we can go there's a few other restaurants we can go to on our own time uh, and things like that in our own free time um but i do miss cooking you know i, I love just it's relaxing you know playing music while you're cooking i i, uh, I enjoy it a lot i have a personal question actually about the the restaurant situation i'm curious normally when we go on the road you get uh, a per diem or a meal money and then you can go mm -hmm. wherever you want to is it the yep. same for this, or do they tell you you go to this restaurant, this restaurant, and it's all taken care of through the league? How's that working? No, so we got um, – there's no cash anywhere. You're not allowed to pay cash here because uh, they don't want, obviously, us transferring things to one another. Um, so it's all for credit card driven. But we did get per diem direct deposited um, into our accounts instead of cash getting handed out to us. So it's still the normal per diem we get on the road every day um, and game days. Uh, but we do have to pay for our meals – when the team doesn't provide them. So if we go to dinner tonight, our tenor, I will say, you know, pay next to dinner. Um, so you got to pay for your own meals there, but we, they are giving pretty damn. No, thank you. I, I was, I was very curious about that because yeah, I know yeah. how things normally are and I'm not sure yes. how they are there. No, the PA uh, did a good job of, of kind of making it as normal as possible and, and giving us little incentives like that. Can I ask you another question since you mentioned the PA uh, mm -hmm. as a player, as part of that union, how proud are you of what the union and the league was able to do because in the worst of times they came up with a pretty good situation that ensures labor peace for the next six years for this league. And look, mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you, you weren't really a part of it, but you know, this league has, has lost a full season has lost a half season yeah. because of work stoppages. How important yeah. is it to you as a player that they were able to hammer that all out during all of this other stuff going on? It was very important. And I know as, as you know, as a PA and as players in the negotiations to get working together, um, we wanted, security you know and so we, we didn't want to come here and and have something happen and then you know next year be completely kiboshed by something or um you know a lot of it came down to money as well uh, a lot of things behind the scenes um a lot of topics that didn't really get out and so um the league you know it was a lot of back and forth a lot of things you know not everyone's happy you can't make you know all 600 players happy you can't make every owner happy and everyone understood that especially in times like these um so it was very important that we got a deal done. And I think both sides, you know, gave some things up to, to make it as fair as possible and as safe as possible for us while we're here. Yeah. And I think that was the most impressive part because mm -hmm. it, it seemed like both sides did meet in the middle. And sometimes in those yeah. negotiations, I mean, look, major league baseball, what they went through mm -hmm. just to get going again, uh, you yeah. guys were seamless. Yeah. Uh, and I get a lot of credit to our PA, a lot of credit to, you know, there was about five or six guys that were really heavily involved in the return to play committee um, in our league that uh, was, you know, I, I heard late nights talking to Gary sometimes twice a day for, for days straight uh, with Don Fair. And so I give a lot of credit to those guys on, you know, making it safe for not just them, but for their families and things like that, especially through phase three in the training camp um, when guys are going home to their families, going to the rink, and you don't really know what people are doing. Um, but the testing is top notch here. We're getting tested every day. We're getting tested every day in camp. Um, the lengths you have to go to just to leave the hotel. Uh, you know, you got to show that, you know, temperature check every 12 hours, got to show your badge to leave and come back in. Um, so it, they, they really went all out on the security and on, and make sure that we try to keep the virus out of, out of, uh, out of the way so we can finish the season. Nasal test or saliva test? Nasal here. Oh, it's not, it's not the very, uh, you know, the deep one up in the brain, but it's kind of a middle nose, but you, the eyes water, it gets the eyes watering a bit. It's a little uncomfortable. It's about 15 seconds for both nostrils. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's uncomfortable to say that. Some people ask me if I was disappointed not to be in the bubble. And of course the answer is yes, but I always follow yeah, that up yeah. by saying, if it's a nasal test, I'm okay staying right here. It is. It's a, yeah, you're lucky. Yeah. Um, here's a question from Kelly. 
Do you guys have roommates or do you each have your own hotel room? No, no, you tell her own hotel room, especially in times like these. Uh, they don't want guys. Could you imagine if you had to have a guy in there for two months? I mean, really? Oh, oh. I think I'd pay for my own room. <laughs> as much as I, as much as I would love the guy, I would have to pay for my own room separate. Uh, no, but like we can't even sit on the bus. Like when we take our bus rides to to and from practice or games, uh, we can't even sit. You know, two guys can't double up in the same row. Um, so we have two buses. Um, so that guys can have their own row in each one, each staff member, each coach has their own row. Um, so if that would be very, uh, hypocritical if they ended up putting two guys in the same room. Yeah. That's, uh, are you, are you getting used to that social distancing thing yet? A little bit. I've had, you know, sometimes you leave your room and the mask is hanging on your ear or it's not covering your nose fully. And so there are, you know, these, uh, health officers or compliance officers that are, are around the hotel always reminding you to put your mask on. Uh, there's sanitized stations everywhere, you know, probably hundreds in our hotel. Um, every room you walk in and out of, every floor, they're all over the walls. Um, the, the elevators, I don't think you can have more than three people in the elevator, if I'm correct. Um, so, I mean, they, they went through everything. Yeah, that, we, we, had a, uh, we had a meeting the other day because we're going to go back to the arena to, to broadcast the games from there. And we don't, fortunately, we don't have to go upstairs because you're only allowed to have one person at a time in the elevator. Yeah. Because <laughs> exactly. they're not big enough. And I'm like, look, I know I'm a little Who's overweight, but for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah, they're Who's like, take the, the stairs. stairs all the way Just up tell there, me I'm yeah. fat. Just tell me I'm fat. I'm too big for the elevator and I need to take the stairs. I'm okay with yeah. that, right? <laughs> oh, here's oh, exactly, an off the, uh, exactly. here's a kind of uh, off the charts question here from Ireland Douglas. Maybe it's Ireland's why this is being asked. If you could move to a dream location in or out of the United States, where would you go? If I could move to any state, sorry, you cut out. Any, any dream location inside or outside the States. Wow. See, this is a make wow. you think one out of nowhere. I don't know if I could answer this. I mean, uh, I've been to some pretty cool places. Um, Hawaii's awesome. Like, I mean, somewhere with the beach, probably. Uh, I'm not too much of like a asp. I mean, I love Aspen and Vail. I love the mountains and the snow. Uh, but if I was going to move somewhere full time for the rest of my life, it would definitely be on a beach somewhere. Yeah, you can always visit the snow, Seth. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't need that year round. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, Brian wants to know, what was the reaction to the Let's Play Bubble Hockey t-shirts you guys got? We loved them. Uh, Ahmed sent those for us. Um, we, we loved wearing them to that practice, and it was, uh, it was pretty cool. The guys are wearing them around the hotel still right now. So, um, you know, obviously fit what we're doing here. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, it's, uh, yeah, we, we liked them a lot. They were pretty cool. All right, so we talked earlier about you didn't get the decals on your floor, but you guys got mm -hmm. the coolest shirts, right? Exactly, 100% we did. Uh, they definitely uh, went all out, and uh, Nick Mitch, everyone was wearing them, so it was, uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty cool. Have you uh, heard from – I know you can't see the other guys from other teams that you said that, but have you heard from anybody from any other teams that uh, thought those shirts were cool? No, we didn't. We didn't. Like, I, I barely see other teams. You'll see them walking through the lobby. Um, but they're, they're keeping us, you know, far away from everybody, um, for these first few days. You can't, you know, our room keys don't work for other floors, things like that. All, you can only go 10, you know, we have a meeting floor and a, um, uh, you know, where we eat floor and then lobby. That's only three floors you can go to for the first six days. Well, here's what I find to be funny about this. So you said on, on the first, then you can start to interact mm -hmm. a little bit with other guys. The playoffs start on the, on the first, you guys play in the second. <laughs> Who the hell wants to talk to anybody else from any other team once the playoffs start? Not me. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to hang with the guys in Toronto. That's for sure. Right. Yeah, Go exactly. Hey, you guys hey. playing cards? <laughs> no, hey, I'm definitely what, not doing that. Uh, I'm gonna, I do have a question about that series, but I want to ask you this question first. This is a pretty good one uh, from uh, S. Slocum, who says, was it hard for you to pack personally for what could be a two-month trip? It was, it was hard. Um, you know, when you're packing, you're shoving things in, you're trying to get as much as you can in there. Uh, and then that's for a four day your, trip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you open your bag and you said, well, I didn't bring anything. You know, it's like one of those where, uh, you're kind of struggling to find stuff to wear every day, even though you think you brought your whole closet. Um, and especially since we don't have to wear suits to the games, 
Uh, we could kind of wear whatever we want. That made it a little bit easier because if we had to pack, you know, six suits, that would have just been that would have been a grind to to bring to. Do you have is there laundry facilities available for you? Yeah, a hotel still does the laundry service here. Um, there's not like a third party one just because it'd be obviously not very. Uh, but I mean, you don't. It's not bubble like. <laughs> you you don't have to go to uh, the floor that no, has I, the washer I, and dryer and do it yourself. I don't. <laughs> I didn't bring the quarters on this trip. No. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Does oh, anybody gosh. have any soap? I'm out of soap. I just yeah. need one <laughs> <Yeah>. more load. <laughs> yeah, Crazy stuff. Man. I mean, oh, we're yeah. laughing about all this stuff, but but honestly, think about this. It was only a couple of months ago that this would have been unheard of, and hopefully it's only going to mm-hmm. be a short time before we're laughing about, could you believe that that happened like that? But yes. you know, what's it like to be right in the middle of this? Uh, you know, as you said, you can't go to this floor. You can't go to that floor. You can't do mm-hmm. this. You can do that. Nuts, isn't it? It, it is crazy, um, but I, I think it's necessary. Um, but it's 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 just been a weird year. I mean, twenty twenty has just been a year that I think everyone wants to forget about uh, and move on. And uh, it's interesting, but I, you know, at least we found a way to do it. And, you know, you see, MLB is kind of struggling, and um, you know, I think the bubble is probably the way to go. You know, NBA went to Disney and. Um, that seems to be working for them. They've had no positive tests inside the bubble, I believe, as well. Um, so, you know, that's what it's all about, I think, keeping everyone safe. You kind of touched on this a minute ago, but uh, Ramon wants to know, is it nice not to have a dress code? Very nice. Very nice not to have a dress code. Uh, I, I don't mind wearing suits to games. Uh, I kind of like the professionalism of it and, um, and you know, looking nice for the game. Um, but in this situation, I think for every guy to bring – you know, all their suits, because you don't want to wear just one or two suits to every single game. It would have been very tough to, to travel with them, I think. Um, so at this point, it's, you know, we still have team rules. Can't wear sandals to the games. You can't wear ball caps to the games. Uh, no, like, holes in the shirts or rips in the jeans. Um, so we're still going to, you know, we're still rules, uh, but you, there's a little more leniency. You think that would um, have any chance of carrying through once we get back to normal? You know, we've had this conversation actually uh, a few days ago. I, I don't know. I think I think you're going to start seeing it a little bit more. Um, you already kind of are. Uh, um, seeing it with guys wearing sweaters or um, guys starting to wear the hats and things like that. Guys want to show their personality a little bit more. Um, and so, you know, it could lead into that. Um, you know, especially when the NHL starts getting pictures of guys walking in and out of the games, um, showing their own personal style. Um, I think uh, this may be kind of that, that opening um, that some of the players want. Do you think this all began when Torch wore a hoodie on the bench? <laughs> yeah. I think, did he get fined for that? I don't remember. I or they told remember. I think they told him don't do it again or something like yeah. that. But I think he was feeling sick and he had the heat pack under his hoodie uh on his back i think and he, was, he wasn't feeling well that's why he did that that was pretty funny though yeah that was, <laughs> I forgot about that and, and now he always has the the, the vest thing that he has. he's been yes. pushing the envelope for a long time here yeah this guy. he has do they have to wear do they, are you gonna tell him are you oh, gonna you be able to tell him yeah oh i'll tell him i don't <laughs> he and i have I that kind of relationship i tell him he yells yeah, some expletives yeah. back at me and we're all good it's not a problem exactly <laughs> but uh way laughing Yes, exactly. Let me get one more fan question in here. This is a – I know the answer to this, but Ray wants to know, did you bring the cannon? Oh, honestly, it wouldn't have been a bad idea. I would laugh so hard if we had the cannon in the shrink when we scored. Or they played a sound when we score maybe, I like think, up the I, cannon. I think in your home games you're supposed to have a virtual cannon. Really? I, I that, think that's – don't cool. hold me to that, but I saw that yeah, somewhere. Yeah. And – so that'll make a little more uh, nationwide feel for sure. I mean, we'll yeah, score score a lot I'm of sure goals the other teams are going to hate it, but yeah, hopefully it goes off five times a game. That's what I'm hoping. Why for. do they hate <laughs> it so bad? Just because it means that they could potentially be losing. Is that it? Uh, it just scares you when you're not used to it. Now I hardly even, you know, I notice it. Um, but it's not as bad. Like when I played for Nashville, my first couple of years and you hear that cannon, you're <laughs> like, what was that? You think the roof's <laughs> coming down or something like you know, it's I, I like it's to watch. Funny, uh, but, uh, I, uh, I I like to watch the visiting press sometimes. The one that usually gets people is when you guys first come out on the ice before the first period mm, starts. Yes, yes. The yes, one that's yes. not tied into a goal. That one catches yeah. people off guard. I love that one. The random one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to ask you, uh, just from a game standpoint, is 
is the game plan for Toronto basically the game plan you had last spring against Tampa because they're so similar in styles of play? You know, I'm not going to tell you all our secrets. Come yeah, on, no, I know, but I'm kidding. No, um, <laughs> yeah, they're they're both fast teams. We understand that. We like to play fast as well, and we like to play you know our brand of hockey. We like to be physical in your face, um, forward check you, hit you, um, try to make you uncomfortable and throw you off. So, you know, that's what we're talking about. Um, you know, we obviously pre scout them. We know they're what their top players like to do. Um, they're obviously special teams is going to be a major factor in this series, obviously in any series, but really this series with um, the skill they have on that power play um, in Toronto. So um, we worked on some power play penalty kill today as well. Just trying to get ready for that and kind of what they do. The um, you know, the playoffs is where heroes are made, and sometimes they are unsung heroes, guys you wouldn't expect. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to that that last scrimmage you guys played last Friday, that uh, – Alexander Texier, Emil Bemstrom, Alexander Winberg line was uh, yep. pretty impressive on that day. And I know it was just a scrimmage, but uh, when you're talking about uns- unsung heroes, is that group a group that could come to the forefront? 100%. Um, they have the skill. I think they have the work ethic um, to, to make teams uncomfortable, make defensive uh, defensemen turn, make them, um, uh, you know, on their heels, back them off a bit with their skill. Bemmer's got a great shot, great release. Um, Texas fast. He's hard on pucks. He's strong. Um, got a great shot as well. Uh, and Alex, you saw in the scrimmage. I mean, he looks, you know, the best I've seen him. And seen him. Um, uh, he's skating with the puck. He's moving open areas. Uh, his vision is incredible. He's finding guys in great spot. So that line's got, you know, if they play well, we're, we're going to be um, in a great position, especially with how young they are. I think they're eager to, you know, this will be their second playoffs. So um, they kind of know what to expect now. And I think they'll be very eager, especially Texas Bams. I forgot with Texier, because it's been such a small sample size, I forgot how hard his shot is and how accurate yes. his shot is. It's a bullet. <laughs> Not it blocking really that one in practice. Uh, especially him. And, no, 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 no. I, I tell him to shoot it, I just get out of the way. I don't, <laughs> I don't need to hurt myself trying to, trying to stop this shot. What's for dinner tonight? You make up your mind yet or what? Um, I think we're going to do, we can do Uber Eats, um, too. So I think we're going to order an Italian spot tonight. Uh, there's like six or seven of us. We'll put in a big order. Um, I don't think we're going out for dinner. We're just going to chill. We're going to go to the Toronto exhibition game tonight against Montreal because we heard we were allowed to, um, but it's no ex, no exhibition games we can go to. We can only go to the real games once they start. So that we were kind of bummed about that, but we'll are you going to watch it? Yeah, we'll watch it. We'll throw it on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they're not going to give away any secrets either, right? No, I'm sure they're not. <laughs> we'll be Seth looking again. for them, though. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thanks, uh, it's always great to talk to you. It's great to see you in good spirits, and uh, mm-hmm. good luck to you and the boys as you get it going this week. Thanks a lot, Bob. Appreciate it. Blue Jackets yeah. defenseman Seth Jones, hockey from the bubble, presented by Nationwide. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Bob McElligot. So long.